All right, we got a movie. It's called Everything Is All At Once In My Ass All Of The Time. Now, I don't know about you, but when I saw that title, I just about puked myself. And then I said, oh God, this is gonna be some rancid indie quirk garbage, isn't it? But then it comes out and I'm hearing shit like, dude, dude, you gotta watch this movie. It's a revelation. It's the second coming of Jesus. So I'm like, okay, all right, you know what? I, I like Death of Dick Long. I, I thought Swiss Army Man was pretty interesting. I'll, I'll check it out. So I, I go and I see it. And, and what do I find? Another $15 wasted on some overhyped bullshit. Okay, I'm- I'm fucking done, okay? I, you guys have been recommending me so much retarded shit lately. I'm sick of it. I could not stand Titan. I was bored by the power of the dog. I was shat on by Annette. The Green Knight had maybe one of the worst screenplays I've ever seen adapted to the big screen. And then this year, I get reamed by the characterless, unoriginal Robert Eggman ego trip that was the Northman, and now I get totally fucking blue-balled by this. Fellas, it's time to stop! So now you're asking, Jacob, why are you such a stuck up pretentious bitch. Why can't you just sit back and enjoy a movie for once? Okay, I'll tell you. When most people go and see a movie, they aren't looking for anything all that specific. The idea is to be broadly entertained or offered some kind of heavy, emotional, or thought-provoking experience. And on a broad level, that's exactly what Everything In My Ass offers. It has humor, it has family drama, it has expansive thematic scope while still tending to the emotional needs of its human characters, it has all this crazy kung fu action, people getting beaten to death with dildos, it's got a Ratatouille parody with a raccoon, it's even got a parallel universe where people have hot dogs for fingers, and that ends up possibly being the most emotionally effective alternate reality in the entire film. So yeah, no surprise honestly that people are so enamored by this. But what about me? The review. What do I look for in a movie? Well, it's simple actually. All I want is to be compelled to watch it. Every film ever starts as a blank canvas. Unless it's a sequel or adaptation of sorts, you arrive at the theater with no preconception of the film's characters or world. You are simply staring at a series of moving images. If I show you a character slap another character for no reason, you will think negatively of the slapper and positively of the victim. Now our canvas has some substance. If I follow through with a scene of the victim punching the slapper, now we have some progression. But we've evened out our empathy for either person. Does it matter the outcome if nothing's at risk? They'll just keep hurting each other into infinity. If I have the slapper then draw a gun, now we have stakes. Stakes are absolutely necessary for a story to feel compelling, as without them there is no risk risk that the characters run for any of their decisions. Without risk, you lose any sense of progression, and without that, you simply do not have a story, or at least a story that you have any reason to watch. If the slapper then shoots the victim, but the victim transports their consciousness to an infinite number of other versions of themselves, then what exactly are the stakes here? Anytime the slapper and victim get into a fight, is there any reason for us to feel tension or suspense from it? This is the overarching problem that I have with the film, and multiverse films in general. What exactly is at stake here? That Jobu Tofu villain guy will destroy the multiverse? Do I care about this broad notion of multiverses? No, since there is no human, no lifelike character for me to offer my empathy to. How about the short round guy from the Alphaverse? S sorry, you mean the exposition dump guy? Yeah, I- no, I don't care about that. What about the real, quote unquote, versions of Evelyn, Joy, and Waymond? If any of these characters are killed, there are an infinite number of them in the multiverse, which the Daniels exert no reservation in cutting between. And then, as far as the family drama goes, the risk is, what, that Evelyn won't arc by the end of the film? If you actually follow the family drama plot, nothing happens! Her arc comes out of nowhere and isn't motivated by any urgency or inciting incident. Only the massive deus ex machina that is the multiverse, here come those quotes again, Plot. So that's the big issue with the film. If you felt like you were watching this and even though the fight scenes were creative and super well choreographed and even though there were all these crazy ideas and character drama, but there wasn't any real tension to any of it, well, there's your answer. It's like listening to a pop song that doesn't have a very good melody. It just kind of sits there. To cover some of the other issues I have, while I admire the madcap energy of the film and its ambitious merging of so many genres and ideas, I don't think it does any one of them particularly well. Like if you separate everything, the sci-fi is pretty mad. It's like The Matrix meets Marvel or whatever. The family drama is like an okay, sappy, feel-good indie movie. The existentialism is about as juvenile as the Daniel's sense of humor. Also, quick note about that humor. 
I did not find a single joke in this movie to be funny. Now, maybe that speaks more to my sense of humor than the films, but what I did find funny was that despite being a pro-LGBTQ film, this also has a crucial side gag making fun of how weird it is that men are sticking things up their butts. That was funny to me. Anyway, back to the genre blending. The only thing I thought the film did exceptionally well in that regard was its martial arts. This is actually a really good martial arts movie with some really exciting fight choreography. The actors, it seems, also did a pretty good job with all the physical stuff that they had to do. Then we get to the film's themes. I feel like the Daniels took the longest possible route to essentially just copy It's a Wonderful Life. It's basically this. This is how the theme more or less reads, okay? Are you ready? Be happy with the life you have and accept the other people in it. Dash it with some teenager level tangents about optimistic nihilism and that's pretty much it. It's not that profound. But Jacob, it doesn't need to be profound. No, you're dumb. You ever hear the expression less is more? To go back to that blank canvas, if you add something to it, you need a reason for adding it, an end that it serves to reach. Otherwise, it just kind of sits there. Menacingly. Confusing the audience. And by the end of the film, they're like, wait, what was the point of that? Why hot dogs for fingers? Why not rulers or thumbtacks? Why do you have to stick an object up your ass in order to learn Kung Fu? Why does swallowing a turtle statue give you better hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities from another other universe. I really liked how Evelyn saying I love you to the tax lady comes into play later, with the two being romantically involved in another universe. That's clever. That had purpose. That was a motif. But what about everything else? Please comment down below and let me know what the butt plug up the ass represents for the two henchmen learning kung fu. Haha, ha, no, it's supposed to be random and absurdist. Haven't you seen Rick and Morty? I've seen Rick and Morty. You wouldn't get it. It's too high IQ 5 you, you fucking bozo. Okay, so we can just excuse lazy writing now because it's trying to be funny. Got it. Speaking of, the dialogue in this movie is fucking awful. I don't know how nobody noticed this, but there is so much boring exposition, and every time it happened, I felt the pace grind to a complete fucking stop. How does nobody criticize this? Did the Daniels not learn how to write subtext while they were in film school? Four years of Emerson and you two still can't write subtext? It's so on the nose. It felt like every line was something I'd read out of a fucking fortune cookie. The look of this movie is so glossy and overdone. It has this phony veneer of plasticity and the perfect lighting, the perfect makeup effects, the Marvel-esque pacing and score. There were so many moments where I wanted it to get way more raw and lo-fi with its look and music, but the Daniels are insanely keen on making the production as bombastic and loud and in your face as possible to the point where it just becomes annoying. Half of the movie is its climax and it's just not earned. Without your stakes, all you have is empty spectacle with the most basic of basic messages. Why do we need all this multiverse garbage to dilute such a simple story? I'd rather take an intimate, focused character portrait over this histronic, flailing bullshit any day of the week. It's the difference between this and It's a Wonderful Life. Both have the same essential themes and similar dramatic narratives, but that film's patience and limited scope earns its catharsis, where the Daniels hyper-pop cinema shit show displays no such tact. If you want to watch the good version of this film, then I highly recommend you check out Don Hertzfeld's The World of Tomorrow series. The first film in just 17 minutes covers a vastly more profound view of the universe using a similar brand of absurdist humor and emotionality. Or, I don't know, maybe you'll see something in everything in my ass that I did. Okay. I'm gonna be real. This movie isn't that bad. It's not good, but I wouldn't go as far as to call it a bad movie. Like I said, the editing is really great and the kung fu stuff is a lot of fun. There's also some really solid acting and I do find the characters to be mostly watchable. I just don't, it's just so overhyped. You guys need to stop, okay? I know we're in a drought of good movies right now, but just because you guys see something that isn't completely generic does not mean it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. If you do happen to belong to the camp that believes this, then at the very least, when you recommend it, say something like, it's Cloud Atlas written by Deadpool, because then I know, like, <laughs> what to expect. Okay, I'm done. This, this video was a complete waste of fucking time.